Hello everybody, Darren here, and welcome back to episode 7 in my second Let's Play series for Anno 1800. In the last episode, we built our first Docklands and set up our first exports, allowing us to completely remove the production chain for beer. In this episode, we're going to continue building up our Docklands and revisit the Arctic to finally settle on a glacier and begin exporting gas. Now, in between episodes, I've taken the time to kind of beautify the harbor area. Of course, we had some comments slamming me for how not good it looked. So, took that to heart, and uh, cried a little bit, internalized it, and then uh, got to work. No, I'm only joking. I wasn't happy with it either, and I said that I was probably going to touch things up. And generally, I just moved some stuff around, just kind of beautified the area and moved some of the ornaments around. So now, I, th I thought I'd take you on a little tour of what we've got. We essentially have our lovely pale pier with a straight line key that is now uninterrupted leading back into the City of Swords, flying to either side by benches that are overlooking the harbor, and lovely ladies on them looking out into the distance wondering if he'll ever come home. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what that was. But yeah, so essentially this kind of key then leads all the way back in. And then we have our slipway. Which uh, some comments were pointing out that's what it's called. As I was stumbling over my words trying to remember it. And uh, we kind of have some rowboats, some fishing... Um, what is this even called? Fish traps. Yeah, I was going to say like things for f crab fishing or something, just all kind of lined up here where people would kind of be playing around the slipway and getting ready to disembark, as it were, uh, to go lead back all the way out. And of course, with the little bridge here, I've now added a road, you know, so that it actually breaks the fence up a little bit. That guy's, uh, I don't know what the hell he's doing, but okay. <laughs> but yeah, so basically, the fence is now broken so that it's an actual road that leads to and from either side. Same with this side as well. So I just think generally it's looking really, really... I personally think it looks great. <laughs> I love it now. I think it looks great. I, I'm eager to hear what you guys have to say about it. And then as we get further back in, we have some of the billboards touting things like the Passage and the Anno Union, as well as our little um, Cyclopean Anchor, which is the Season 3, kind of one of the Season 3 ornaments, as well as the Traveler's Kiosk, of course. They're reading about the Passage, they're seeing the billboards for it, they're waiting to book a tour uh, and see if they can go to where John Faithful was. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of the situation. Now we should have Captain T-Bone coming in any minute now. And I've basically just changed things a little bit. I'm going to be exporting a lot more champagne and soap. I think by listing these amounts, we should actually get them into the specialty slots as we've currently exported 944 and 300 respectively. Uh, of course, as we build up champagne, which I think I might actually try and specialize in. It's kind of a cool good to, to, to work on. Um, as we build that up in the specialty, we'll get more for it. And we know that we need about 200 beer worth of beer coming in, I guess, right? We need 200 beer uh, to come in, and that way we're completely satiating the demand for beer, and we don't have to ever produce it ourselves, basically. Now, we could do that by listing 200 immediately, but it's fine for now. I just want to get this up into specialty, and then this number is going to go up. So as we get to specialty, we're now going to be basically... Uh, we're gonna get like something like 160 beer back instead. So anyway, Captain Tobias is here any minute. Let's just see where he is right now. He's just turning the corner in the island. And then essentially what we're also going to be doing is building up a lot more in Lusk. So Lusk has its Docklands over here. I'm actually just gonna move it. And the reason for that is I noticed that we have so much influence again, which is great. That's because we got rid of two Harbor Master offices. You effectively don't need Harbor Master offices anymore if you have Docklands, because you can just build them on every island. So over here, we're going to get rid of this one. Say see you later. And this is going to be a really fun project area to work on, because this is essentially our, like, big production docks, right? This is really where an industrial Docklands main wharf kind of thing belongs, because we have six piers. We have... This is where we build our ships. We have all this industry here. So this is going to be great to really see develop over time. Um, but anyway, as we get a harbor master built in, We'll just we'll just slam in Rohit Bargava, the naval architect, and another naval architect. Thank you, Captain T Bone. Trade contracts going grown more profitable, as expected. Anyways, so that just means that we're basically able to now build ships for a little bit less, right? 30, 35 percent construction construction cost reduce, bleh, reduction, workforce reduction on both of the on. Okay, um, I find it hard to talk when someone's talking in my ear like that, I guess. Um, anyways, so construction cost reductions for both of them, workforce reduction for this one, maintenance cost for both. So basically just building ships a little bit better. Now obviously we can get more modules and stack even more, and we'll do that later. Uh, but for now, let's head back over here. 
Uh, so, what's basically happened is we have just reached Tier 4 for Soap and Tier 4 for Champagne, as we call it. Which means you can see everything is now listed as a specialty, which is nice, and that means we're getting a little bit more out of it. So we were previously getting 130-something, now it's 167, so that's getting better all the time. Once we shift 2,500 in terms of volume for Champagne, then we'll finally be able to get to Tier 3, and so on and so forth, and get more beer back all the time. So now what we're going to do is just list this as 200. So we have to always sell 120 Champagne, that should be fine, I think, with our current production rates. And we'll put something else in for canned goods instead. Something like pocket watches, which we have too much of as well. So we'll just list, I don't know, something small. Maybe 125. Let's just list an even number. That would make more sense. Let's just list 100. Nothing too crazy. We're just going to build it up kind of slowly. And then as we unlock more things out here... Um, yeah, so we have to sell even more soap. And then we get to penny farthings. Then we'll bring in something like penny farthings. Because we are actually quite low on that. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Anyways... Well, don't want to focus too much on that. I know that is like the new stuff and we'll keep we'll keep an eye on it periodically, but it's kind of just going to trickle up in the background. However, actually, we can do a little bit of building right now because having reached two new specialty slots, that's given us two more depots, Mine some exports right and anyway. different modules that we can use. So let's get building. Now, some people tuned into my stream uh, and they saw that I was basically playing the save, but just experimenting and showing off Docklands and how it all works. I didn't save anything or, or do anything like that. But I kind of have now an idea of how I want to build this. Um, so essentially, let's just load up extra depots here. Uh, something like that. So that's a huge amount of storage we can now handle here. Now we have exports offices. And they can kind of go in on the corners. And the reason they go, I'd put them in on the corners anyway is because they don't have any requirement for like free space. So you can just put them in the corners, and that way they can be completely enveloped, and they're totally fine. Loading wharfs, on the other hand, do need a bit of space, so we'll just do something like that. Now, I might do something a bit different with this in future, but for now, for now, we're just going to kind of make this kind of snaky-looking thing. And that's actually kind of how it looks in real life anyway. But, um, yeah, in future we might do something where we, if I have a lot of space left, we can break it up, break it up a bit. Maybe do a double layer or something like that. We'll see how it goes. It doesn't really matter. Uh, but for now, we're just going to stack it all like this. And I kind of plan on having an extra pier here to the side. And then what we can do is wrap around the key like this. Just to make it look like people actually do move along here and walk along here and stuff. Looking good. Looking good. The only issue with this thing is this area here. Um, let's flick it to daytime <clears throat> so we can see a little bit better. Yeah, this always bothers me. There's not much you can do about it, though. It's just the way the game will automatically detect whether or not it's a harbor space or not, and then put its road down based on that. So I think what would be really nice is if they end up allowing you to choose between a paved street and a paved key road, if that makes sense. Because otherwise, yeah, we can't really decide. So we could go with something like this. This kind of cleans it up a bit nicer, but it looks a bit weird, maybe. But we'll leave it like that. That was suggested to me on the stream to just double it up that way and... At least that way it looks a little nicer. Maybe as well, if we do it either side. Is that better or worse? Hard to tell. What bothers me a little bit is that the bricks on the road actually change direction. Can't unsee that, you know? Cannot unsee that. So, maybe I'll get rid of that a little bit again. Now yeah, we'll just put it back down here. Alright, let's leave it like that anyway for now. It's the best we can do. Best we can do. Looks cool though, I think. If we just have another look at it here for a second, just keep kind of still and enjoy, soak up the sights. Um, for visual distinctions, basically you can always tell the Harbor Master have the little flags on top. Actually, sorry, these are the Harbor Master ones here. These are the export offices, and these are the loading wharfs because they have little chimneys. And then the other ones are depots with all the little wood bits in front, and they're loading and unloading things. Um, but yeah. So these, these actually don't need um, to have a, an open route to clear water or anything. You could box them in if you wanted to, but I don't really want to do that. That's probably one rule I'll stick to, which is generally I want everything to have access out. I also realized as well on stream that you can basically swap the styles of these. So making them like kind of like L shapes make them look a little bit nicer. There we go. We can just fit them in a bit better that way. So it's not perfect. Obviously, the, roof, the roofs don't line up here, the rooftops. Because it's different heights. But it just generally looks like it fits together a bit better. Unfortunately, the piers are different sizes to... How many grids is it? It's like five, as opposed to these are three and three. 
So it doesn't line up perfectly. You'd have to leave a gap in between them. Which I experimented with, and I just prefer it the way it is. So that's kind of our docks, our main wharf. Eager to see what people think of it. I think it looks awesome now. So I'm really happy with how it's coming together. And it'll look even better as we start to build it out further. Do we have any more modules left to go? We have uh, another pier. And we have the repair cranes. In fact, we might be able to put some down right now. I did want another pier out here. We're lacking steel. Okay, we'll leave it for a while then. Because I've actually set up a new construction route. Or trade route. Dealing with construction. And speaking of trade routes, I've actually grouped all of our trade routes now as well. So that's another quality of life feature that came for free in the latest game update. Which is basically that you can create these little groups and name them. And then put your other trade routes inside of them. So you can just look at where you want to at any one time. Now I named all my trade routes after the regions we were in. So it was already quite organized. But now it's even better because I can just go like, okay, all of the ones that said AC just go into the Arctic. Right, It's all the Arctic only trade routes. Then we have New World only trade routes. And then if something comes from the new world to the old world, we list it here. New world to old world. And then old world to new world is actually different. We could maybe bundle them together. But I actually like to know that something is being produced here and going out rather than out and coming in. Uh, and then old world arctic, etc, etc. You get the idea. Um, and then we have our charter routes that are the same. Now these actually say five influence each. But I don't think they are. No, the, uh, this is already flipped over, actually. Yeah, so they, they're not. We've only spent five influence so far, so that's good. The other three must have been for free. Um, so yeah, so that's basically it. So only really I've done this area. Obviously, this area probably needs a little bit of work or something to be done for it. I do still like this kind of general look, but um, with the new ornaments that we have, we could probably dress it up and make it look a bit nicer. I do love this area. I really, really, really like it. I love all the kind of natural things that kind of pop up when you're putting down the keys. Uh, the way it kind of fills that in dynamically and stuff. Obviously, it'd be nice if you could choose what goes there, and you can kind of delete it and put it back, and it'll, it might change around a bit every now and then, but generally what has spawned there right now I think looks awesome, so I'm very, very happy with this area now. This could maybe do with some work or something here, but the actual water area right there, gorgeous. I think so, anyway. If you don't mind me tooting my own horn. Did we already talk about this? Yeah, the, you know, the billboards and stuff, right? I think we did. Pretty sure we did. Anyway, just to go over it one more time, we have the rowboats ready to go on the slipway, and then we have the tourism, the passage, the annual union billboard. Everything's all geared up here for the future content and future DLC that'll be coming later down the line. I'm probably not happy with this thing. I might remove that, but other than that, we're good. Well, something that's actually quite interesting, I won't do it right now, but if I was to remove this, we can never put it back down again. Our harbor has actually changed with the latest update, where this is now counted as harbor space. And you can't put ornaments on it. So that's kind of like permanently there now, basically. Uh, but those things are always kind of weird. Right, so that's pretty much the plan. I think over here, the last thing I'll do just really quickly is... Change what we're importing and exporting here. Um, I thought what might, what might be good... Now, you can do things... Remember, this playthrough isn't like a full-on, full-on, super optimal playthrough, right? Instead, I want it to be a bit more almost roleplay in a way. I'm still going to be trying to get all of the things unlocked and mess around with it as much as possible and delete some production chains that I feel like we don't need. But I don't want to just, I don't want to do the thing where you can basically go to different islands and create this like interdependent trade routes and just raise all your goods and delete tons of production. It's a bit too crazy. <laughs> Maybe eventually. As it is. But just here in the beginning, we'll start off with just a bringing in some coal. Because obviously, we're sending coal to the Arctic, and I've actually made sure we have enough, so we should be fine with it. But we could always bring in some, which is nice. So let's see what we could ship out. We, for instance, gold ore. It's, a, it's an interesting one. We're bringing in gold ore from um, the New World. You know what might be better? Or sorry, not the New World, the Arctic. What might be better is to actually get rid of Gold. Gold bars. Uh, although, we do also need to level up soap, generally. Hmm. So we could Check increase that. Copy? Let's just say 100 gold bars. That's 700 coal. That's more than we can ever, like, hold. Uh, I'll check the copy. All good? Great. So, what we can do here, actually, is... Now that we've freed up so much workforce, we can start to export way more stuff. So oh, yeah, I know what to do. There we go. I don't know why I wasn't just thinking fairly simple on what we could do there. That looks awful. Don't worry, we'll, I'll clean all this up. We might even do it this episode, but I want to focus on the Arctic. So that's why I'm being a bit flippant here. Um, yeah, so what I'd like to do is... I'm just trying to think. Should we import soap? Yeah, we could import... 
Oh, no, no, no. I know. Do we have Tallow available to us yet? That's the next thing. Tallow is here. So we need to export 2,000 soap. 2,160 soap. And then we can bring in Tallow. That's what I'll do then. Because what I'll basically do is bring in Tallow and then we'll send off all the excess soap to the other place. Yeah, so that kind of works. I don't know if that makes any sense. But here's, here's what we'll do. So we have... These are the Tallow... This is the Tallow industry. We're just going to copy and paste that. Boom. Wrap this up like that. And we're going to get this. Copy it there. I know what you're thinking, Darren. You're absolutely mad. Check the statistics screen. Can you handle it? Yes, we can. Just slam them down for now as well. It's fine. Four of these are probably too much. But everything else is fine. So if we were to check, for instance, Tallow. Tallow's demand is obviously 32 because of all the soap factories. But it's six. its production is 16. Pigs, 29 production, 27 consumption. So the amount of tallow is totally fine. The amount of soap, we we're putting on, we're putting in materials. way too much demand. But what's going to happen is we're going to burn through a bunch of tallow until, excuse me, until we run out. But by then, we should be able to just import some to offset that. And in fact, we could maybe even remove the tallow buildings altogether and just go with this. So we'll see how that works. It's something to do with our... It's something for our workforce to do, though. Now, the other thing is we're going to be low on construction material, and I have a ship moving construction material all the time. We're just going to slam down way more iron. Because like I said, we've got all this new workforce. So might as well use it. And then we're going to get another steel beam factory. Tragedy. Don't worry about it. Don't Any worry. Redeeming qualities can't be seen for this smart. And then with all that extra coal that we're bringing in, we should be laughing. Um, so let's also check depot modules. We'll just put these out here. And then we'll move them in future. So that's going to give us extra storage as well to take in that extra coal. In fact, if we can build more, we might as well. Great. All right, sweet. We'll see how that goes. So basically, just to recap, <clears throat> we can't actually bring in the tallow just yet. Can we bring in soap? Yes, we can. So we might as well do that. Oh, sorry. Bring in the soap. Let's get rid of something that we have too much of. Maybe guns. What's the rate? Something like that. Why not? So basically, here at Lusk, our production island as it's steadily building up we're going to be selling some of the gold that we're obviously actually we're actually buying it from the pirates we don't actually produce our own gold that'll be the last thing i'll do actually is we should produce our own and i'd be mean to do that for a while so there it is there 125 engineers we can easily handle it so we're going to be selling it and then making some more of our own so that's a big demand on coal big demand but at least for Gold War now we have 600, so we can really start to carve through that. And we'll kind of just check things in future, see how it's all going, and then start to condense these piers into our docklands. And uh, try to optimize the amount of... Oh, yeah, that's the one last thing I need to do, actually, is we need more glass. I checked that in between episodes. That was basically... We were using just slightly too much in these things. But we actually have enough sand mines already, so we're totally fine there. Uh, what is this? This is Windows. I'm just going to move that... Bring that here... Put that in there. Looks a little bit weird, maybe, but maybe something else can go in here in future. So that's essentially all of these things are just making glass. And then we have two window factories, is it? Yeah, seems that way. Hmm. I don't know if that's better or worse, but it'll just... I don't know. Just leave it like that for now. For now, for now, for now. Okay, cool. Anyways, so big production going on there. That should be fine. I don't think we're going to run out of anything. The worst case scenario will be we run out of coal, but the fact that we can just bring coal in now, I feel like we'll always have stuff to bring it in. So we'll see. See how it goes. Uh, anyways, then on our main island of swords we basically have extra trade contracts now that we put down two modules i'll work on that a bit later it's it's fine uh, although we're gonna yeah i won't even be able to take in the bananas so another th what's the next thing on the list it's hops isn't it 
Hops is needed to be able to get the other stuff. So instead of that, we'll take in hops. Not that we even need it at all. But we'll just take it in because we need something to come in. And how much do we need? A hundred, only 171. So actually not that much. So let's just list 171. And we're building up soap all the time. And big soap deliveries should be coming up here as well. So let's see what it takes. Yeah, it's just soap. Just big on soap. Seven minutes he's going to be coming in here with more stuff. So I might as well just also make one manually, manual delivery of soap, I think, from down here. Because I think this island's going to have a lot now. Yeah, but we can leave that. We can go to the Arctic. I keep saying it. I do want to just... It's a waste not to get something queued up here, right? So let's just get something. Uh, I'm just trying to see what the requirements are. Those are all soap. Cotton fabric. He wants me to import. Can't do that for a while. Uh, that's all soap, 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 tallow. Well, it says soap because it's just the current leading item. So it's like, yeah, if we just sell what we have the most of, then that's fine. We could do other things, though. I mean, we have a thousand, over a thousand sausages. So let's just list a thousand to sell and bring something in. Um, no idea what, though. We could go with clay. <laughs> it, I don't even think we could take in that much. I was going to say, if we take in clay, then at least we could just get rid of the clay pits and just refine it in massive brick factories or something. Uh, what else could we take in? Maybe bread? How are we doing for bread? Bread's actually really low. That's perfect then. Let's get that instead. Great. Yeah, so we're going to exchange the sausages for bread. That's going to give us this a specialty straight away, which is nice. And then maybe we could do the same with glasses. We've got too many glasses, so we can specialize in that as a fourth good. Um, so what could we bring in then instead? We could do something like tailored suits and then just sell tailored suits later on. Or how are we doing for fur coats? Let's get the fur coats. Let's get the fur coats. So a thousand glasses. And there we go. Just getting rid of all of our ex... Um, what's it called? Excess. We're getting rid of all of our excess. And some of these will then be into the specialty slots, which unlocks more for us to build and build up our docks and make it bigger. So it's actually working out pretty good. And then with something like fur coats, it's nice. We can actually sell that to Madame Gahina and make some money. Or we could just take it and sell it back for something else. All right, so to the Arctic. Well done, well, and you smell nice. Thank you. Um, okay, so in the Arctic, you may remember uh, two episodes ago now. So not the last one, but the one before that. I was kind of struggling here a little bit, and uh, I said, "Look, I need to just." Go for a walk, clear my head, and redesign this entire place. And that's what I did. And I recorded it all. It took me about 45 minutes, maybe 50, of just moving things around. It doesn't really have anything new, although we do have more workforce than we had before. So it is slightly more efficient for the same amount of coal usage, I believe, as before. So technically, it's more, it's more efficient. And then with some extra space, I just slammed down charcoal kilns. Although I don't mind using this if we need more population later on. Um, and currently, currently we have, let's have a look, we have 1,339 technicians. Let me just have a real quick look at why that would be. We're, one of them is missing something. This household here. They are slightly too far from a post office, and the post office is right there. That's a damn shame. But you know what, it's fine. You know, it's fine. I don't really mind. It's, it's slightly annoying, that one person. And it's this house as well. Really Was it? The temperature is bearable. I've got an idea then. Actually, what we could just do is something like... Like, I wonder, are these guys in range to that post office? Or are these? Yeah, these guys are probably more in range. So we could do that instead. And I'm sure they'll probably... Yeah, it's 100%. So th th there we go. We fixed it. Anyways, this is a small thing. <laughs> Um, and the, the workers aren't perfect, the explorers, I should say, but that's okay. I just, I made the decision that, yeah, not all of the houses are going to have everything they need in terms of being next to canteens, but that's just the way. I'll, I'll explain that in a time lapse. Um, but essentially, anyway, my thinking here is that we have 200 technicians available. It takes 400 to make a an airship, but what I can do is just pause the gold mines if I want to. Now, I know that's not, like, super efficient, it's not the best way to do it, but all things considered... 
everything's actually really stable now, so I'm, I'm quite happy with how I've done it. Now, now we have way more influence, I could actually start putting down Arctic Lodges and really starting to squeeze things out. I didn't anticipate we were going to get so much influence back from Docklands, which is great, but um, I didn't factor it into my initial plan. I'll probably use them up here, one of them up here at least. So what I'm going to be doing is, we've got everything now in place. All the trade routes are set up. So let's have a look. Arctic, we have the Arctic supply. It is the most mental trade route I've ever built, but it actually works, so it's fine. And then the Arctic glacier supply. So the glacier supply, just to basically explain it, if we start off with, start off on King William Island, right? It loads up on 200 coal, goes to Hopefell. Hopefell is our glacial island. We should really rename these. Uh, goes to, oh man, I keep forgetting to name the damn airships. People gave me great names. Actually, Red Baron was one. Maybe I'll name the other one Red Baron. I really like that name for it. Anyways. Um, yeah, so anyway, with the Glacier Supply. So we load up on coal at King William Island. We unload it at the Red Barn. Very last thing I'll mention is you can only have 250 storage on these islands, as far as I know. I fully upgraded this, so you can't get any more storage. There's no depots or anything like that, right? So you can't get more storage than 250. So you're always going to be at the whim of that limit. 250 is as much as you can really dump there and then however fast people are going to consume the coal for 250 and all the other goods, you have to deal with that. So you have to get your trade routes going here pretty quickly. Um, because you can't like say stack a thousand and then leave it for ages or something. And obviously ships can only deliver 200 at a time because only airships can arrive here. Anyways, so we've got our 200 coal that we're loading. We're unloading it then at Hopefell. So that's our first journey between them. Then we go back to King William. And if we have any extra coal, we drop it back off. Okay, so it's just in case we were trying to drop coal and we did we had too much on the ship. We come back to King William, we drop it back off. Then we pick up consumer goods. We pick up the pemmican, sleeping bags, oil lamps, and parkas. Make the trip to Hopefell, drop it all off. Come back to King William. If we've got any left, drop it off again. If we have too much, discard it. Pick up then husky sleds, schnapps, canned food and coffee and make the trip. So basically, as you and then uh, and vice versa, then we just go to Hopefell, drop it all off, start again. And if we have anything still on the ship, drop it off back. So basically what's going on is we're picking stuff up here, bringing it to Hopefell. And then if, this, if we can't unload it, we bring it back. And I think doing that is... Fairly smart. <laughs> I don't know. At least it seems to be working. Wait, now, the ship can't really make much of its journeys anymore. Is it still going? It's probably just di dumping stuff in the water now because this place is probably full of everything it can handle before we actually bring people here. But before we bring people here, I've got a time lapse for you. The time lapse is going to be of me reorganizing and rebuilding this island so I can talk to you in detail about what happened. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, grab your blankets and your hot chocolate, get all snug and cozy, because we're building in the Arctic, and it is such a nice atmosphere. I'm doing this at the end of my day, personally, this recording over the footage here, and uh, being a particularly stressful day, and it is just so nice to actually just be able to sit back and watch Anno for a little bit, <laughs> and talk over what I was doing, essentially. Uh, but so what was going on here was... I was planning on originally just moving all the houses out to the right side of the island and then move them back after I'd done the road layout. I decided that was just far too tedious to kind of do and I thought it would ruin the time lapse really just constantly looking forward and back. Uh, so I thought I'll just ferry up a bunch of construction material, have those ships ready at the bottom of the, uh, at the harbor and just ready to pile it all in when we need it. Um, so I ended up deleting like about a third of the island and then I worked my way up to the middle, deleted that middle third and then the top third afterwards. So I didn't remove everything at once just so as not to send everything into complete shock. Although you can see that when I cut the roads, the workforce at the top does freak out a lot and I'd largely just removed all technicians, but uh, things will be fine. You gotta be careful as well when you're not using blueprint mode here that you could end up getting Arctic flu. And then of course, if you get some sort of sickness or something, you can't remove the house. So I wanted to be very careful with how I was building, so I wasn't using blueprint mode. Uh, but essentially what I've just done there, uh, towards the bottom and in the middle there, I put down some arctic lodges. So right in the center, two of them give good, uh, sorry, not lodges, ranger stations. And they give really good coverage. And I want the post, uh, post offices to go kind of next to them because they fit really nicely and they have really large coverage as well. Now for heaters, I talked about two episodes ago that I like to kind of do this rib cage style heating system where 
you know, one straight line out of the heater gets thinner and thinner as it goes down, like the, the ribs, if it were, as it were. But that didn't really work out because the bottom coastline here is so wide. It's actually wider than the middle of the island. It's almost like you need to do it upside down. So I end up having two heaters fairly close to each other. You could definitely optimize that to be better. Like I could just have one on the coastline and then start adding them as we go further in. So it's not perfect, but I'm still really, really happy with how it's all kind of turned out. And essentially then kind of after that, as you can see, as we get further up now, um, I just have the canteens on the edges. So if the, and the heaters in the center. So the heaters, canteens don't need heat. So if you can try to avoid it, putting them on the edges means that, yeah, they don't need full heat coverage or at all, but they kind of extend into the town and then the heaters are permeating out of the town, if that kind of makes sense. Anyway, what ended up happening towards the end of this build is we, I used the exact same amount of heaters, I believe, as I had before, but we got way more people in and way more coverage and more production buildings covered as well. So it definitely was overall a nice optimization uh, without being too uniform and being like, oh, I'm just going to build this perfect, perfect grid. Uh, maybe we'll come back to it though in the future. If I really need to squeeze more out of it, we could always redo it again and just be like, okay, now we're going to go for pure peak efficiency. Because the thing is here, I don't have any Arctic Lodges. And um, I don't know if I mentioned it already in the episode or if I mention it later, because obviously I do this afterwards. We have the influence now to get some. So we could definitely like raise, you know, to just decide where they go and raise the populations a bit uh, in future if we need to. Uh, but we should be able to satiate the demand of one glacier, I think. So now basically just, just again, trying to make use of as much space as possible and adding in all the houses up towards the top left of the island. So it's all, all been pretty straightforward. We're going to move over to the um, production time lapse now in a moment as well. Oh, actually, I forgot. This just shows where I've actually done the upgrade. So all of the technicians are actually on the south of the island because that's where I have like the post stations. I keep calling them post stations, the post offices. Uh, but yeah, so you can just see we're flying up in terms of technicians again. We're up to plus 340. And now I started doing all the kind of um, production rework. So the town is largely covered now with heat and everything out to the, the west of it. I actually don't think I ever showed in this episode the population. I do for a quick second, but I didn't really talk about it. Um, but the population is like full for technicians, I believe, like all the houses are full. And for explorers, I left a few of them not covered by the canteen fully, just because it's better to have like, I don't know, seven in a household than not have a household, you know, or to move the canteen somewhere where it would remove a house. So ultimately, I didn't actually get full coverage with all my canteens, but I think overall we got more people in with the space I used if that makes sense. Anyway, what I'm basically doing here is just creating a dedicated section for the bear hunting cabins, right? So they are the two circular ones at the bottom. And then we have this pemmican area where it's like six or, I think it actually might be eight pemmican, I don't know, facilities. I don't know what they're called, cookhouses. And um, then again, you know, supply warehouses don't need heat. So trying to put them out of any heat zone so that I know that we can cram in as many production buildings as possible. You can see the sleeping bag, uh, factories or whatever in there, park of factories, and then oil lamps and all of that stuff. It's all kind of compressed and condensed down because it doesn't mind being next to each other. And it's actually great. In future, like I said, with Arctic Lodges, we might be able to like squeeze more out of them or reduce the workforce needed or something like that. So that should be pretty good. So there's actually a gap on that left side of production that you can see now to this right side of where there will be no heat. So that's kind of where I wanted a line of sort of supply warehouses to go. And then on this side, now we have the Husky farms. And I was just working out what's the best way to kind of get a module going for these. So I wanted three in the line and all their modules to sort of connect. So I think I've been relatively space efficient with that as best as I could. And as you can see, there's no heaters down by the bottom of the cliffs there. So that's where my uh, supply warehouses go. And uh, I don't think I end up showing it here in this time lapse. We're just coming to the end of it now. But I actually managed to get two Husky production chains up and running. So not just the one factory. Uh, so we should be able to supply technicians for quite a while with that. All right, so that is how the current King William Island came to be. And I'm really happy with how it's turned out. It's obviously much more efficient, both in terms of population, we've put more people in the island than ever. And in terms of production, we're producing more than we were last time to also sustain them and to overproduce so that we can sustain an entire glacier, hopefully, if I've done my math correctly. And of course, now with the added influence that we have, if we have room for Arctic Lodges, we can really squeeze a lot more out of them and potentially 
um, get a second glacier island up and running as well. But for now, we're just going to focus on getting our main glacier island up and running. And then if we have, if we feel like we have the consumption rates to deal with the second one, then we'll do it. Um, we've also got ships here waiting with just a bunch of stuff on them. I'm just going to bring this ship back down here to pick up some construction material. And we can basically get to work on Hopefell. Um, so... Let's have a look-see. So let's just move that here for now. Essentially, on this glacier, I don't want any explorers. We just want technicians. That's all I want on this island. Um, and the reason for that is that there's not really... I don't really plan on making them work anything. I actually didn't think they could work anything, but it turns out they can work goose farms, because you don't need a fertility for that, and the same with husky farms, I think. Yeah, so both of those could be worked here if you wanted to, but I... Don't really see why you'd do that, unless you did just have too much space here, Get for whatever reason. The market, then, eh? Oh, right. Oh, yeah, nice. So, Captain Tobias compliments us on... He's done another trade. Now, we're not going to sit back here. obviously want to focus on the Arctic. But, yeah, so we've got our sausages and our glasses now up to the specialty level of four, which basically means that we also get now four extra depots, two piers, two exports offices, and two loading wharfs. So we could just start slamming more stuff down here. But we'll come back to it hopefully in this episode, or if not, we'll do it in the next one. Um, but yeah, so essentially what, what I'm planning on getting at the very least is we just want about 500 technicians. That allows us to operate two gas mines, uh, at least without using any items to reduce workforce. And apparently, um, people were telling me in the comments as well, if you place an arc, uh, a mine like this, somewhere here, or sorry, an arctic lodge somewhere here, you can potentially overlap two gas mines and reduce the workforce in both, which would be pretty nice to do. So we could try that as well in future. Uh, but right now I'm going to be working on this one, which is obviously quite separated, so just by choice, just because I want to, <laughs> um, just because it's like next to the actual thing. All right, so let's get to work. Um, we'll need our first heater thing there. We'll probably get a road to come out like this. Not going to do this in time-lapse, because we've had a lot of time-lapses this episode. Yeah, so we can get four maybe from here, and four maybe here. And get a road that comes down, so that the heater hits everything. I think it would have hit everything anyway, but... You could move it. And these are going to be, like I said... None of them are going to be explorers. They're going to be technicians. So we have to factor in where the post offices are going to go as well. Etc. And this requires heat. So let's just make sure we've... Yeah. You could also build houses right around this. There's no reason not to. Oh, he said it's not even winter yet. That's so sad. Um, so what do we need? Post office. There it is. And just having it, like, right next to the gas mine would be pretty... Or the um, heater would probably be a good idea. They've got their canteen. 100%. Damn. 90%. Oh, we can't move it down any further. Gosh darn it. Oh, well. Well, you we could probably be connected somewhere else down on the bottom. Oh yeah, they actually will need it to just level up. Actually, that's I just realized that. You could just level them up and then move your canteens afterwards if you wanted to. Uh, so yeah, it's not too bad actually. What would happen if we just popped it here? I'll just leave, I'll just leave it. Otherwise, we're just going to be doing things over and over again. The other thing we could do is just pop it, pop it up here as well. So it doesn't need to be heated. Actually, yeah, let's try that. Because the heater probably runs out somewhere around here. Let's see where it goes up to now. 80%. Wow, even further. Man, it does not have much reach. It's deceptive. Okay, sorry for being... I, I mean, I should have maybe just done a layout. And I need to turn this on, actually. People are cold. And we also need to get um, ranger stations. So we'll need two of them. Just trying to think where they could go. Somewhere central, obviously. Something like this, maybe. Although, yes, if it was central, it should be like that. Yeah. And there we go. Heated. Nice. All right, let's get these houses in.
They're heated as well. Perfect. Gets a little bit finicky when it comes to um, needing to get them in next to the cliff edge here. Makes me think that I should just try to ignore the cliff edge as best as possible and instead just do the most something like that. I think that's probably a better idea. Alright, cool. Happy with that so far. Now this isn't going to reach everything obviously, so we'll have to build another one. And we know that this house needs a canteen as well. So we could... Hmm. Let's just lay out these roads a bit, a bit farther. Usually six across is the ideal. Let's go seven for that one. Okay, so how many are we up to now? Six, uh, 77. And once they get to 100 and five, so we need 500 before we can actually start to upgrade them. So 500, man. All right, we'll have to get a bit quicker about this. Couldn't find the canteen again. Just trying to work out, is it gonna reach? No, it looks like it won't reach if it's there either. gonna put it there. I'm not terribly confident that. Maybe I'll redo some of these things in future. <laughs> I just, I don't know what it is. I just feel like I don't want to just waste people's time. That's what some people have been saying to me. They're like, um, oh, you sound a little passive aggressive lately. Or, I don't know, you, you know, you're tripping over yourself a bit more. And it's because ultimately I just, I'm wasting time now, but ultimately I just don't want to waste people's time. Like, I want to make sure that I've got a plan when I go into an episode. I'm really happy with this Let's Play so far, both in terms of how it's doing and just in terms of playing it, because I genuinely feel like I haven't wasted anyone's time. Almost, like, every episode, I think you do see something new that you haven't seen before. Almost every episode. The war episodes were a little bit um, repetitive. But other than that, I think, um, generally speaking, you see a new production chain, a new region, something new almost every episode. And, you know, hopefully in this one, you'll see gas, you know? That's just always what I'm trying to make sure, like, I'm not wasting time, we're, I'm getting to that point. Uh, relatively quickly, if that makes sense. Is this worth doing it like this? I don't know. We'll see. But in terms of being passive aggressive, I, d I don't know. I didn't feel that way, but maybe I came off that way. I'm not sure. <laughs> Alright, now we're talking. Things are finally moving. Good. Alright, they're all heated. Uh, they're next to what they need to be. This has obviously got a very long journey before it gets its thing. But I don't think there's anything I can really do about that. Let's make this a block of three. Alright, we're actually running out of material, but that's fine. We sent this guy down here to go pick up some. And I can come back up with extra Many stuff. Yeah, we'll try to find more stuff. And then we have our ships here that are ready to drop off extra wood and things like that. So, up on the Arctic Plateau. Old Nate provided you with enough gas to build your first airship, but if you want more, you'll have to extract it from the islands up north. Good thing you can travel by air now, because steep cliffs render them unreachable from the sea. So, no reason we can't just keep building in Blueprint and just activate all these things uh, once we're done. Something again like that, something again like that. And then we'll try to lay out post offices and stuff like that. So, post office again down here would be good. Maybe just close that in. So, what's the full reach? So we're going to be lacking some canteens down this way. Somewhere... How are these houses doing for that? So yeah, wow, I'm really being not generous enough with the canteens. A camp. Still waiting on that ship to come in. You know what? I'm just going to redo this. I'm, I'm not happy with it. I know what I want to do, though. I know what I want to do. Some of these houses might go into ruins or something, though. It's just a bit of an issue.
I want to do canteens on the edges like this. Let's not make any. Let's not do any half measures. Let's do this properly instead of wasting people's time. <laughs> All right, something like that. Totally fine there. Two houses that way should be okay. They should all be hit. Fire's out of control. That's fine. <laughs> Same with these things, right? So move this down. Move that down. Move that down. No half measures. How thrilling! A renowned personage has arrived. A renowned personage. I never understood why she says personage. I've never really heard of left ruins behind. Ah, that's fine. Don't worry about it. Okay, we're here with the. Oh no, we're not. Wow, we're slow. Even with the extra. What is it called? Particularly pulley pulley. It's taking us a while. We're only just about to come up now. All right, cool, but this should work way better, right? So the canteen's on the edges, and uh, then if we can place the heaters a little bit further out. Now, this one will probably just stay there. It's fine. I don't mind hitting the canteens with heaters, but they don't need heat, so it's kind of a little bit of a waste of space. So I guess maybe could I do something, for instance, like this? Let's just experiment with it. And would that still hit everything I want? Yeah. And then heat's just running out around there, so that's actually kind of makes sense, right? Yeah. I can't put a house here. I can't turn it sideways enough, so it's it's fine. But generally, it's it's on the extremities of where the heat is going, so it makes sense. So I'm happy enough. There we go, some extra houses. All right, let's drop all this stuff off. Boop, 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 boop. And then we'll just go all the way back and pick up the steel. All right, let's get... To be honest, we don't actually have to build them yet, so maybe we shouldn't. Now, the next thing I'm most curious about is the post offices and their reach. It's really... I feel like it's much easier to see at night times, weirdly enough. See, the reach ends right there. I couldn't see that before. So this is great. This, these things reach very, very far. So yeah, we're totally fine with putting it there. To be honest, we could maybe even... Oh, no, no, no. That's because of this one. Yeah, yeah. So the reach ends here for there. Okay. So that's good to know. So now we can just see much more easy where this needs to go in order to give us full coverage. So something like down here, pretty good. Around here would be more ideal because that's going to reach all the way in. Yeah. Nice. And I guess having them joined up with the heater was actually kind of nice before. So maybe I'll do that here too. Wow, weirdly, that house can't be heated? Is under really? Siege. Yeah, it just doesn't reach. <laughs> wow, it's like right next to it, but it doesn't get the heat. That sucks. That's crazy. So we can only just about get around... Oh, I know it can help it. There we go. Yeah, well, we don't need to remove that. That's fine. Okay, cool. Um... And then, yeah, it's so much easier at night, I feel like, to see that reach. So, yeah, the canteens end around there. So, having... I guess we have to build it to see or something, do we? Because it's not coloring it green. Yeah, there we go. So, yeah, now we can see that having it around here gives us really great coverage again. Uh, could we have it even down here, for instance? Possibly. Having it in the corners where there's no heat. Oh, actually, thinking about no heat. Well, we're going to need heat down here anyway, so it's going to need another one of these somewhere further down. Hmm. Oh, what a mess. <laughs> Building in the Arctic is really interesting, though, i got to say. I just constantly want to put stuff down, then I'm like, oh, it needs to move. How's our ship doing? Let's load it up with stuff. It's not there yet, actually. It's just... Oh, it is. A competitor's island is under siege. Alright, let's just load this up again with um, 
Oh, I need to unload the ships. I... Nice. Oh well, we can free up both of these ships. They can go back to the old world now. Only are reporting in. And now we can load up again. Take some steel up here as well now. All right. Let's see how many are we at. We're at 318. So let's try to speed up a bit because we just need to get um, to 500 basically. And I can just check on the statistics screen to see if we're really missing anybody. Move these. Cool. I want to look after everyone. Okay, so heat's gonna have to go further up there, which is perfect actually, because yeah, I need to move this. So somewhere there like there will be much better, and then we'll have another heater down here. So let's just activate that one. So I think I can do it with about, I don't think I need more than three heaters actually, and I think we'll be able to get the, to the 500 mark. We'll see. Let's just cut that for now, and let's see, maybe can this slam in a bit better, tuck it in there. This could be tucked in this way. Your people are miserable. Uh, they're not miserable. You're miserable, you old man. <laughs> yeah, okay, this is looking a lot better. Okay, good. So yeah, I'm just trying to see, is there any houses without coverage? Like, you'd think that this one, but no, it has a tiny bit there. Yep, seems like all the houses have coverage of canteens, except up here, but we haven't got to that point just yet. Gonna build a canteen like somewhere out here. And it needs to be there basically to give it the beans. I might as well just push it in though. They are really close to each other, but I guess they do different things. Yeah, so we can move this down a bit. Good. Alright, nice. No road access. Excellent. All right, so now let's just fill in some of these areas. Anything that basically has um, heat can just get a house. Uh, it looks like I can change these roads around, so I'm just going to do that now. There we go. Alright, what are we up to? 429. So at this point, they're going to be consuming pemmican. So we're actually starting to use our, our trade routes are actually active now that are coming in. Also, is time playing? No, it's actually, it's actually not. Alright, so that's kind of what we got so far. We have two ranger stations in the center. We have full postal coverage. Oh, we don't down there. So maybe that's a bit too far. Well, we, we have a little bit, but just not full. So I guess that, that might be fine. Maybe. Yeah, because I can't see that getting any shorter without me just building another one or moving this down to here or something. But I kind of like where it is. Um, all right, let's just drop off what we have. So how much are we up to now? 468, not much to go. Just finish off some of these areas. And is there anything that needs upgrading right now? Nope. Send this back. 
We can build a gas mine. I find just the safety goggles. Turn it yeah. off. That ought to have to be your pump attendant no more. The cheek of it. I asked you. Alright, 498 and 500, which means now they're consuming oil and they're going to go way above 500 now. And once they get that full oil and they fully grow, we'll start upgrading them. And we'll remove any of the ones that we don't want. A competitor's island withstood cool. an attack. 582. So yeah, basically we just need to wait now until it gets to 10. So while it's doing that, let's go back to the old world. Oh, actually, there's just some people that aren't heated. Let's just move them just in case anything goes wrong. Got them. I'm pressing M. There we go. Yeah, let's tuck them in here. Nice. One more household over here that's not heated. Let's drag them down. All right, cool. So what's that? 668. And we should have enough. What's wrong? Don't know why there's an exclamation mark over it. It's just because it's not full yet. Yeah, I guess so. All right, so anyway, let's go back to the old world and let's just build up our docks a little bit more. Seeing as we have the, we should have the materials here now to do it. I'm trying to make this place look even nicer. The guy's actually arriving in three minutes. I'm hoping there's Your a limit to the sausages. So let's just reduce these down just in case there isn't. And um, so with the hops exchange, that means we have now everything we can get here. So we could get, I don't know, spices or we could just get something else instead of hops. Canned food is always probably needed. So let's do that exchange. Trying to always build up soap to get it to the next level. So excited for us. And what about Lusk? How's Lusk doing? 300. It actually has got just too Your much soap down there. From its Which is funny because, yeah, our ships have just arrived. So we could actually just go pick it all up now. In the turn. Our massive soap industry that's been booming down here. Look, and the fact that we're bringing in all that tallow. Can we get tallow now? I have to double check that. So let's have a look. So we were importing soap. We don't need to do that anymore. We need to import tallow. Can't do it until we get soap to 2160 or anything to 2160. Okay, then. Well, we'll keep importing then because as long as we import, we can just export it in the other place. And coal storage is completely full. So everything's looking good. Let's get these ships to go down there and pick up that, um, pick up that stuff. All right, let's get the extra modules done. So we have more depots, more loading wharfs and export offices. So let's go with a loading wharf facing in this way. An export a office design. as a corner. Withstood an attack. And then loading again. Maybe, yeah. Got an idea actually. So there's three loading wharfs all on the line there. I don't know if that looks good or not. Got an idea. We could. We don't need a repair crane, but I like the look of it. So what are we lacking for this? Uh, bricks. All oh, right. Um, well, just as a temporary measure, I guess let's just throw down a bunch of brick factories because I think we've got way more clay than we need, and we can power it if we just keep it next to the power station. How much clay do they have? Thousands. All right, so they'll just, they'll just hammer out bricks now for a while, store them all up, and then we can get to building that. So basically my plan here is then is to have a pier, another pier, as close in as possible, which seems to be there. Ceasefire has... Oh no, it says material. Let me go blueprint mode. Free harbor needed. We will be so much stronger together. 
I don't know, it's, I don't know why I can't see it that easily. I, I did it before, basically. <laughs> and it uh, was much easier to spot where it was able to go. But it's fine, I guess I'll just wait for the material. You mustn't. Let me try it one more time. Here. Like, I'm pretty sure I had it right about there. What the hell is that? Arthur Gaspro is fighting. They're still at war. Him and Venti. Yeah, I guess we'll tidy it up a bit later. But, um, the other thing is then just to extend this out. So we'll leave it there for now. All right, let's go back to the Arctic while we wait on those bricks to get made. And are we able to upgrade now? We are indeed. So let's go. Oh no, these guys are cold, actually. So how many is that? 280? So now we can turn on gas. So gas is finally operational. Just like that. Uh, we still have way too many explorers. So what we'll keep doing is just get another 250 technicians. If we can. Gonna wait for them to grow a bit now because there's so many of them. Yeah, I'm actually probably never gonna get to the husky sled part because we need 750. I really just plan on getting to 500. Because then we can just use the gas mines. So let's build a second gas mine. Can't get it yet, we need more wood. But luckily, we have all the construction material we need. What are we dropping, by the way? Whale oil. 50... Can you imagine just throwing 50 tons of huskies overboard? It's an absolute crime. But we have to do it. If they can't be loaded, it has to be done, I guess. All right, so what was I going to bring? Construction material again. We needed more wood and a little bit more steel, probably. All right, nice. This is working out quite nicely. We need also a uh, warehouse down here. And then, yeah, 270 workers. So that's it. That's as many as we need. So what we can do is actually just remove everyone that's not a technician. Because we don't need them. They're only going to be consuming stuff. So I don't know if people feel that's a waste or not, but I'm going to get rid of them. And then when we want to get more technicians, we'll build them again. Yeah, we've got plenty. In fact, a competitor's island oh yeah, is okay, under siege. God, you barely need anyone here. Think about it. There we go. Just technicians now. No explorers. Perfect. That's what I wanted. That is exactly what I wanted. Alright, we can just tidy up these roads a little bit. And then we can just put them all, you know, next to the post offices and things and really, like, condense the space down a bit more. There, that just gives me an indication of where they go. Alright. All right, we're just basically gonna wait for this ship to arrive and then back at the old world one more time. I'm gonna celebrate. Oh yeah, <laughs> something like that. All right, let's see how far we can move this. Now we have a clear indication. Yeah, I guess that's as far as it goes. Can it come out a bit? It can come out a bit more. All right, nice. So we'll connect this up. And then what we could do as well is get some of the ornaments in for having the pier boats. Oh god, wrong way around. Competitors have agreed a peace deal. Love it. Nice. Now, my next plan is to maybe have these things here, actually. And uh, we can use depots, maybe? Facing in.
Hmm. Just trying to think what's the best way to make it look nice. I'm not really worried about what we're getting. We don't need repair cranes. I just think they look cool. They've got the big crane on top. Uh, but yeah, we're just constant need of bricks, so we're just going to have to wait. We're just making manual deliveries of soap as well. Uh, and then we're going to need... Yeah, we've actually got a lot of material down here. Maybe in the next episode I'll spend a bit more time really like optimizing and getting rid of some of the piers and increasing loading speed and stuff. So having really nice docks down there. But I'm really happy with how this is turning out. I just need to figure out a way to make this look even better. Like that repair crane could come out there. I'm trying to think, would it be better to have a dock in there instead? Or another pier? Just trying to figure out exactly what it should look like. Just to think it over. But anyway, generally in here it's looking nice. Because I really like how the dot, the pier looks on this side, and I kind of want to like copy that on the other side. Also, these can look a bit nicer if you do it like this, I think, to have the actual turns in them. Although you can't really face which way they turn. Okay. All right, back to the Arctic, we're almost done. And we have to set up our trade route, of course, to take gas back. We're now producing it here, but we're not using it. And we could build a gas um, extraction, or no, the uh, gas-fired power plant. In one of your factories. Wow, blew up instantly, amazing. They blow up so often. I don't know what you can do about that. I guess um, Arctic lodges or something can probably help. They just blow up so often. We actually have too many technicians here as well now, but we cannot go below 500. I think it's good to have a little, a little more than we need, just in case. We could try to get 750, but no, that's fine. Waiting course. Uh, but yeah, with the no actually when we get to 750, then we can set up another gas mine. I have to think what's best Let's for go. us. All right, it actually looks like a really small amount of space. It took me a very long time just to get that, I guess. But um, there we go. So let's set up a new um, uh, trade route for Hopefell. All the way back to the old world. To swords. We're going to pick up gas as a... I think it's a construction material for whatever reason. Not that we'll ever use those slots, but you never know. And we'll dump it. Add the red baron. Name the route. A competitor's island withstood an attack. Gas. Now, is there anything we could pick up there and bring up to them? I don't know. While we're in the old world. Maybe. We could get coal and deliver it directly, but I don't think I need to. Just trying to think what else I could necessarily bring up here. I'll leave it for now, but at least I know that this can definitely take something and bring it up there. Like... Like I said, coal, brass, something like that, and just fly it up there. And we'll just take the gas out. Because we do have smaller ships that deliver... Yeah, I'll show you now in a second, actually. Let's just accept that. Is that good? Oh, yeah, and assign it to a group. It's actually Arctic to Old World, but maybe I'll just put it in the Old World to Arctic, because it's the same kind of thing, even though I'm countering what I talked about earlier. But we'll just leave it like that for now. Uh, so yeah, so things that are being delivered from the old world to the Arctic would be this. So all that brass and all that stuff, so maybe there's something could be done there, I don't know. But anyway, we'll just pick up some gas, we've got seven. I will bring that back. So we're now making... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven mines are making it. It takes a minute thirty, does it? And a minute seven to make one. So if we go to the statistics screen and we have a look at construction material, we can see that we're basically making two tons per minute, which might should be enough. I think that's only enough for one, actually, one gas-fired power plant. But let's um let's pop it down. So we have two oil power plants here. I'll probably get rid of this one. Deal with this area first. I can't do it though until the ship actually makes its first journey, right? Because otherwise there won't be any power. So we'll just have to wait. So while we're waiting, let's continue to build this area. Oh, right. you have a place you've made this harbor. 
Thank you. He likes how attractive it is. Good. Yeah, so let me just move that up for a second. I definitely want them, but I... Would it be a good idea to have another pier? Or is that overkill? And what would this look like if you switch it to... Oh, yeah. Hmm. Is that enough space, though? Of course it isn't. And we can't move that down one either direction without pushing it in. That sucks. <laughs> you got yourself an agreement. I mean, I could just fill that with ornaments. I really didn't care. Yeah, I could do that. I don't know if that would be weird or not. Let's just try it out. Let's just try it out. So just put a key in there. I actually think that looks really cool. Um, and then we basically need some sort of ornaments that go in there. Like we could just get like the standard material stacks and boxes and stuff. Actually, maybe the warehouses, they look kind of cool. And they're pretty big. Alright, we just need six more bricks and we're good to go there. So this is my current docks. Or docklands, I guess you could say. Let's put this here. Uh, we could change the look of this one. This one is... I don't know what that flag is. There's a Swedish one, though. There it is. <laughs> What's this one? I want them to be different. Yes, that one's different. Cool. I don't think I need th this amount of peers. It seems like overkill. Because <laughs> I was already fine with just... What is it? One, two, three, four, five, six now? But these are going to have such increased speeds. 300% speed. It's a little ridiculous. Actually, I'll probably get rid of this, unfortunately. I do like it. But we can afford another um, export office. Oops. So let's get that down as well. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. And then it's all, like, bunched up like that. Yeah, that looks good. I'll just have to get rid of that. Can't put it there because that's needed for the repair cranes. And then, honestly, we could just keep pushing this out if we want to put stuff behind it. So that would be fine. Yeah, I think it looks really cool. I'll be really eager to hear what people think of, you know, this area now as well. As well as just how generally this, this kind of looks. A competitor's island is under siege. I'm trying to think, like, I'd like to do things where we have ornaments going across here. The only way you can do that, like bridges and stuff, the only way you can do that is if you use stuff that doesn't require harbor areas. So the back of this doesn't. So, for instance, the export office, like, I could switch this out, put the export office there, put this here. All fits together, and then, artisan-wise, you could have something like a bridge going in here, if you wanted. To be honest, you could even just put a key in there. If you wanted to, like, do that, then you're obviously cutting it off. It doesn't matter that it's cut off, but I don't want to do that. But it kind of makes it look a little bit more alive, slightly, to have something in there. But yeah. I'll just have to keep experimenting with it. Um, Alright, we can get that done now as well. Boom. At least this is now a uniform kind of... Uh wooded dock area as well. Get some rest. All right, cool. Oh yeah, might as well get this. All right, nice. So do we have gas here yet? Has that ship made its way here yet? Uh, it's on its way back, so it must have dropped it off. We have 82 influence now. Hey, we hit our next population milestone. Nice. 
Sweet. The next one is now 35,000. Sweet. Growing that population, even though I did kill a bunch of, or not kill, removed a bunch of people from the Arctic. Um, all right, so let's go. The very last thing then is that gas-fired power plant. Do tell me uh, we needed 60 bricks for it. So I need to quickly grab a ship that can just grab some bricks. Cargo station. This city is a magnet for genius. All right, let's bring this up here. I'll have bricks for a long time then at least. Bring go, go, go. Activate the engine. Ugh. And that's going to give us what? 25% movement speed. Uh, so, while we're waiting on that, let's have a look uh, one more time at what the situation is. So we don't have specialty level 2 just yet. We are 605 away from getting soap to that. So we could do that with soap. 605. Yeah, there we go. They might run out of soap really quickly or something, I don't know, but I think they'll be okay. What does it say? Missing resources? Maybe I'm not allowed to take. That's the minimum threshold already, so we could switch this now to cigars. Cigars are really worth a lot, actually. So let's go, I don't know, 300? Bring in all those fur coats, ship them all away. And this this should be stable now, I think, the um, beer. We obviously have steam carriages and gramophones we could get rid of as well. So what else could we be bringing in? Um, we're starting to get to... So something, so chocolate is something that we need to bring in to unlock the old Levant & Co. So we need 1,800 chocolate. So that'll give me 951. So the delicacies from the east and west, from east and west, delivered promptly to your comfy salon. From the New World Colonies of La Corona, Old Levant & Co. is the future of the globalized market. Um, what else then? Construction material from Kaitia. Yeah, we still just have to... Oh, penny farthings. Nice. Get that in. And we maybe exchange steam carriages for it. Not the best trade exchange rate, I think, but it's okay. Alright, cool. Docks are getting quite thick. Quite thick indeed. I like the look of this area here. I think it looks cool. Let me know what you think, though. And I love that we got the little staircase here by default. Maybe having two isn't the best. Maybe we could have... Actually, I've got an idea. Your vessel shall be subject to an inspection. We could have the one that comes out the other way. This is this one. Hmm, yeah, we could do it that way. Or, yeah, like this. That's what I meant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we go, got it. It's going to be a long voyage. Kind of cool. You could shift it down one and then just extend the key out this way. I actually think that looks cool. Oh, yeah. Love it. Love it. <laughs> All right. Nice. New orders. All right. The bricks are here. Let's finally finish the Arctic. Once we get this building done, technically the Arctic is done in a way. Um, and then it's just about getting more out of it. So let's say, see you later, oil. No need for the railway here anymore. And I'm not sure what we're going to need, but let's just get rid of this as well. There's a festival. Harvest festival as well. Gas-fired power plant. Boom. Sideways. 1,200 maintenance, 250 engineers. Wow, it actually uses a lot of engineers to work it. 75,000 in terms of construction costs. Let's go. And then, yeah, we'll just dynamically pop these things back in. The most delectable. Oh, yeah, I forgot. It does that thing now, right? Nice. It's cool that it actually works, although I saw some people saying it doesn't work sometimes for them where um, they had things previously laid out and they got all jumbled. But you can actually just press Shift-V on it and still change it manually if you want after the fact. Um, so, this is now going to be taking gas in from all the way over here, but at least it gets it. And we have seven in storage. 
So let's see what the consumption rate of that is versus the uh, production. So yeah, so wow, even just the one plant uh, is requiring, yeah, just nearly nearly that two tons per minute. It's crazy. It does use a lot, but at least we have more than we need. And hopefully that little extra bit on the bar there is enough time for our deliveries to come in. So let's see, where is that thing now? It's just loading right now. I'll just speed time up and let it actually get here, oh, and then everything will be powered again. Done. I'm okay, thanks. Oh, really? You're as <laughs> I probably should as take your gift, but I'm okay. There we go, seven tons of gas is uh, it's on its way. We could uh, enjoy and have a look at what it looks like a little bit more. So, so cool. You can see like the little gas things there. It's actually not powered on right now. When it gets powered on, we should be able to see some extra animations as well. It's offline. How many workers is a regular? Only 150? Gas is so not worth it, I don't think. Although it does go slightly longer. Uh, farther, I should say. There you go. He's dropping it right off right outside. There we go, we're powered on. And just like that, gas is operational in the old world. And I'm pretty sure that everything is stable as well up here. Because we were making these trades the entire time. So I think everything should be stable. I guess we'll find out. Um, let's have a look again one last time. The speed of that ship, by the way. Drops are spinning. That's the glacier supply. It comes back with nothing. I guess you could add, I guess, yeah, maybe actually the glacial supply, once it's done a few drop-offs, it could then maybe go to the old world with a bunch I of gas and then come back. The maybe. Others. No, you didn't. Just buy a share from me. Where did you buy it? In Marbella. Don't think so. We're making good money now as well. Nice. So there we go. That's going to be it for this episode. Arctic is largely done, although obviously we'll come back here and try to get all of the gas mines up and running to build a second power plant. And then as well as that, start putting down some Arctic lodges. But I think in a couple of episodes, next episode we'll do more Docklands. And then the one after that, I think we'll go for Imbessa um, and start working on the story and chain uh, stuff out there, supply chains and things out there, there for the elders. Ways to survive here. Um... Oh yeah, we never did that quest as well to find some more expedition scrap. That's the other thing. Once we, now that we have influence again, it's great because I can actually start to transmute items here with um, Old Nate and start to optimize and get more out of this place. So that's going to be really good fun. Altitude. Just curious about where that other ship is right now. It's obviously in transit. There it is. It's all, already dropped off more. Okay, Damn, it's super fast. Withstood. It's a complete waste an having a, an airship do that though because it's, it's not transporting very much very often. But we have nine in total. So it is gaining, as expected. Love to see it. All right. So thank you guys very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the episode. And I'll see you in the next one. Hey guys, thank you very much for watching. And remember, if you want to support this series directly, you can click the join button to become a channel member. Doing so will get your name in the credits, as well as loyalty badges and emotes to use in the comments. If you don't see the join button, it means the video has been copyright claimed, but you can still join from the channel page on desktop. You can also link your account to our Discord to get a special role on there that will give you access to the Senate House and a few other perks.